This is the Generation Report. I am Paul Zimmy Finn. Hope you're doing well. In the fourth turning's description of past crisis eras in America, the Civil War is presented as the stark lesson of what can happen when the path that America follows into a crisis is the wrong one. When America or any other society follows such a path, Strauss and Howe write, events can occur that exacerbate tensions and lead to changes in generational behavior that greatly speed up the crisis. The fourth turning refers to this process, which occurred during the Civil War crisis, as acceleration. Certainly, the Civil War is the worst-case event to happen in American history, and acceleration, to quote Strauss and Howe, added to the tragedy of the outcome. But Strauss and Howe also make the point that, by their inherent nature, crises can pull a society apart and end badly, just as easily as they can bring a society together and end triumphantly. What if... A society is most vulnerable to going off track during a crisis, not so much when it follows a path of acceleration, not so much thanks to passions run amok, but rather when a fault line of irreconcilable differences emerges. In his 1933 two-volume History of America, The March of Democracy, historian James Truslow Adams described the schism that progressively grew in America in the years prior to 1860. Our Constitution was adopted and ratified only with great difficulty and as a result of a series of compromises. The varying individuals and states that accepted it did so unquestionably at the time with mental reservations in favor of their own varying interpretations. Slavery had become an anachronism, and if the Union could not continue half slave and half free, even less in time, could it have continued overwhelmingly free and a small part slave. Slavery was not merely a local problem, and this the fugitive slave law showed. It was one that permeated the thought of the entire nation and which would one day have to be settled. In The Righteous Mind, Dr. Jonathan Haidt sized up the present-day gap between the left and the right in America in the following ways. Keep in mind, these words were published in 2012. The two narratives are as opposed as could be. Can partisans even understand the story told by the other side? Moral communities are fragile things, hard to build and easy to destroy. When we think about very large moral communities such as nations, the challenge is extraordinary and the threat of moral entropy is intense. There is not a big margin for error. Technology and changing residential patterns have allowed each of us to isolate ourselves within cocoons of like-minded individuals. Our counties and towns are becoming increasingly segregated into lifestyle enclaves, in which ways of voting, eating, working, and worshipping are increasingly aligned. Shifting back to the March of Democracy, here is how Truslow Adams described the state of America in the final months of 1860 and the early months of 1861. The whole way of life and the outlook on it in the South had become entirely different from those in the North, and each section naturally prized its own and, unfortunately, despised those of the other. The Northern anti-slavery men assailed the South in every aspect of its life, economic, intellectual, and moral. The South, feeling itself in no way inferior to the North, returned the scorn and disdain with interest. For several decades, the abolitionists had been shouting for emancipation or dissolution of the Union. Even Lincoln had said that eventually the Union must become all one thing or the other. As it would obviously never become all slave, the inference was clear. Once more from Dr. Height in The Righteous Mind. Once people join a political team, they get ensnared in its moral matrix. They see confirmation of their grand narrative everywhere and it's difficult, perhaps impossible, to convince them that they are wrong if you argue with them from outside of their matrix. Morality binds and blinds. It binds us to ideological teams that fight each other as though the fate of the world depended on our side winning each battle. It blinds us to the fact that each team is composed of good people who have something important to say. We know where America's irreconcilable differences led in the 1860s. Will we heed the lesson this time? If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone important to you. Thank you for listening, and may God bless America.